And then finally, you wanna to go to Google Search Console to submit your sitemap and any kind of related sitemaps. And then instantly, Google will rank all of your pages for 10 keywords at number one. In this video, we're gonna look at what a sitemap is and how you submit one to Google Search Console. Howdy partners, welcome to this video which is all about sitemaps. Now I know what you're thinking, sitemaps are really boring. They're such a boring topic for a video, Tim, even Exposure Ninja can't make this entertaining. I have your back, don't worry, I know they're a boring topic. I've actually been dreading making this video because sitemaps are so boring. So boring. But we're gonna find a way to make it entertaining. So I thought in order to make this video about sitemaps fun, we get a bit of a party vibe in here. Now when I went to the store, unfortunately the only party accessories they had were hen parties accessories but fear not what better embodiment of the carefree joy of a hen party is there than talking about XML sitemaps as this topic gets more and more boring we're gonna add more accessories to make it more and more fun that way you'll be fully entertained throughout and by the end you'll just be fizzing with delight okay so first up what is a sitemap a sitemap is basically a list of pages media or files on your website so most websites these days have a sitemap for pages they have a sitemap for posts and they might have a sitemap for images as well and basically they're there to make it really easy to find all of the different pages of a website in one place the most common formats of sitemap are XML, which stands for Extensible Markup Language. There you go, there's the Friday Night Dog and Duck pub quiz, nailed. Or an HTML sitemap. XML sitemaps are really there for search engines, so helping things like Googlebot find all of the pages on your site. Whereas HTML sitemaps are like an actual built page on your site, which lists all of the pages in their hierarchy. Really, HTML sitemaps don't have that much use these days because most modern websites are pretty easy to navigate. But back in the olden days of the internet, which was like 2014 or something, uh, before we had things like drop down menus and it was really easy to navigate your way around a site, sometimes going to the HTML sitemap was actually the fastest way to find the pages that you need. So most websites these days perfectly fine just to have XML sitemaps, which are kind of hidden behind the scenes and are just there for search engines. So what is an XML sitemap? Well, an XML sitemap is basically a list of pages on the website in XML. XML language. Well, an XML sitemap basically looks like a plain text list of all of the URLs on a website with some additional information. For example, most WordPress websites these days, if you use the Yoast SEO plugin, your XML sitemap will look like this. So this is the main sitemap index and lists all of the XML sitemaps on the site. So for example, if we just click on the page sitemap, what we'll see is the list of all of the pages on the Exposure Ninja website. Now they've also got some additional info here. We've got the number of images on each page to be indexed and we've also got something called the last mod tag. So the last mod tag refers to when this page was last updated. And this is a really easy way for Google's Googlebot to see, oh, okay, right, we might need to recrawl this page because it's been updated since we last indexed it. Your sitemap might also have a change frequency tag, which basically says how frequently the page is gonna be changed, and also a priority tag, and these priority tags are a number from one to five, and basically signify the importance of that page. Your sitemap might also have change frequency tags, which refer to how often this page is gonna be changed, so Googlebot knows when to come back and look at it again, and also a priority tag, which goes from zero to one and signifies the relative importance importance of each page on your site. So the big question is, do you need a sitemap? Now, being completely honest with you, sitemaps are one of those SEO things that for the amount of work it takes to put in, you may as well do it. Most smaller sites don't really need a sitemap because Google's gonna know about the pages on your site. But if you have a much larger site or an e-commerce site, then using a sitemap can be a nice way to make sure Google is fully aware of all of the pages, products, and categories that you have on your site. One of the main benefits of a sitemap is that when you change your site or you add new pages, because Google's aware of your sitemap it's more likely to see those pages more quickly and therefore they can get indexed and ranking quicker. Sitemaps really aren't the golden bullet that's gonna transform your ranking overnight though, so sorry to break it to you. So how do you create a sitemap? Well, a lot of CMSs or content management systems these days actually come with sitemaps built in. So if you're using a content management system, it might actually build a sitemap automatically for you. Now for WordPress, which is the world's most popular content management 
system and the one that we build all of the websites at Exposure Ninja with, most people use a plugin like Yoast to create the sitemaps. We like Yoast because it allows us to separate out the sitemaps for things like pages, posts and images and all that type of stuff. Now, if you're a super internet ninja and you've built your website by hand yourself, then you might have to create your own sitemap. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a couple of mementos. You can use something like xml-sitemaps.com, which is a tool that basically crawls your website up to 500 URLs and builds you an XML sitemap. Or you can use everyone's favorite little froggy, the Screaming Frog SEO Spider tool. Let's have a look at that. So if you want to submit your sitemap to Google Search Console, first up you want to go to search.google.com and register if you haven't already. Once you're in the Search Console, you're going to head on the left-hand side down to sitemaps and you're going to give that a big, fat, bride-to-be clickety-click. Once you've given that a big, fat clickety-click, you're going to get this, which is add a new sitemap. So here you just want to put in your sitemaps URL. So Exposure Ninja uses the Yoast plugin. Um, so the sitemaps URL will be sitemap underscore index dot XML. And then if you click on submit, now obviously we've already submitted this sitemap. Um, so that's fine, but it, you'll get a little thing that says it's been submitted successfully and then eventually you'll have the discovered URLs which are all the URLs that have been discovered as a result of that process. Now on the sitemap underscore index XML you'll probably see zero discovered URLs um, but they'll be indexed underneath pages or posts because that's actually the kind of the child sitemap, if you like, that's where the pages are actually listed. Let's say that you need to build your own XML sitemap. How on earth are you gonna do this? Well, you can use everyone's favorite screaming frog, SEO Spider Tool. Uh, so what you wanna do is stick your website in the top of the tool. This is a free tool. I'm on the free plan here, which limits you to 500 URLs, but you can pay if you want to use even more URLs. Um, so you put your website in here and then you're gonna get a list of all of your different pages up here. So what you probably wanna do is remove some stuff here that's not quite relevant. Um, so what we're gonna do is just gonna click on some of these so you can uh, do your little command if you're on Mac and then you can just right click and click remove and that's gonna remove them from there. Once you've been through and tidied up this to only include the pages that you want to include in your sitemap, you're then gonna head up to this sitemaps menu at the top here, click on XML sitemap and then you're gonna click next and that's gonna then give you you can uh, save it and then you've got your XML sitemap which you can upload to your website. How you actually get that installed on your website is gonna vary on the content management system that you're using. So if you need some dev help, then contact Exposure Ninja and we can sort you out. But like I say, for most websites, you're gonna be just using the WordPress or the Shopify or whatever um, sitemap that you have as part of your content management system or built in through a plugin. So that whole section was slightly pointless, but hey, at least you got to see the ring, look at the rock on that. So let's wrap up this charade with a bit of a recap. A sitemap is a file that you can use to organize your website's pages. Most sitemaps these days are XML sitemaps and they're basically written in a robot readable language which allows Googlebot to find the pages on your site and understand when they were last updated. An HTML sitemap is a sitemap designed for people. Uh, most websites these days don't really need them because they're nice and easy to navigate, but back in the olden days of the the internet when I was like five or something, you would use them to find the pages on a site if the navigation was a bit of a mess. A lot of the time these days, your sitemap will be automatically created by your website or its platform, or if you're on something like WordPress or Magento or Shopify, then there'll be a plugin or extension that you can use to build out your sitemap automatically. And if you wanna make your own sitemap because you're crazy, then you can go to Screaming Frog SEO Spider Tool and you can follow the steps in the rewind. And then finally, you wanna go to Google Search console to submit your sitemap and any kind of related sitemaps and then instantly Google will rank all of your pages for 10 keywords at number one. <laughs> it won't, but at least then you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that your sitemap has been handled. So I hope you found this video useful and that my public humiliation was worth it for your entertainment. And don't forget to like and subscribe and you can click the little bell icon to get notified when we make more videos. We try to release two videos per week all about digital marketing. And if you want even more Exposure Ninja, then you can head over to the 
Exposure Ninja podcast using any podcast player. If you just search for Exposure Ninja Digital Marketing Podcast, you'll find us. We tend to release one episode per week, interviewing some of the brightest digital marketing minds on the planet, including our very own ninjas at Exposure Ninja. If you want some help improving your website's ranking, visibility, and the leads and sales that it's generating for you, then you can head over to the Exposure Ninja website and request a free marketing review. These reviews are awesome. What we'll do is take a look behind the scenes of your site. We'll have a look at how you're generating your traffic and also what your competitors are doing to generate leads and sales. We'll record everything in a 15 minute video, which we'll send over to you by email, showing you how to improve the visibility of your site and generate more leads and sales. It's totally free. There's no obligation to use our services, but I have to warn you, these reviews are a very effective sales tool. So you might end up wanting to become a client of ours once you've seen the review, although there is absolutely no obligation to do so. Until the next video, see you soon.